A new study reveals that working from home increases the risk of being overweight and depressed. In other news, the Pope has Catholic leanings and bears do toilets in wooded areas. An analysis of 5,000 employees from several UK businesses by the health insurance firm Vitality found that 12% of people who are fully remote suffer depression and a whacking quarter of workers, that's right, 25% of workers become overweight. People who stay at home are also more likely to have joint or back pain. And an extraordinary 87% of those not going to the office had at least one muscular skeletal condition, suggesting that being confined to the house may not be optimum for your well-being. Who knew? Now, this follows the news that billionaire entrepreneur Sir Jim Radcliffe, co-owner of Manchester United, who won the FA Cup today, has ordered all admin staff at Man United to go back to the office. The obvious conclusion is that whilst some people are productive indoors, working from home is largely the preserve of the lesser ambitious and the less productive. And with this latest research, the long-term sick are part of the problem as well. For anyone doubting that this new arrangement is having an impact, it's also been revealed that Shirk From Home is fueling the afternoon leisure economy, with golf clubs and hair salons doing a roaring trade. There's a surprise. Now, for some, working from home is an opportunity to work more efficiently and save on travel costs. Many of you have told me that you love working from home and it's a great success, especially if you've got kids or a pet, fair enough. But for too many, particularly in the public sector, it strikes me as an excuse to sit around all day baking banana bread and watching baby reindeer on Netflix. And it's astonishing how that many people, so many people, now flatly refuse to go back to the office. Post-pandemic, it seems that employees think that they're the ones in charge and not the bosses. There are wider implications. Working exclusively from home is bad for the economy, starving local businesses like cafes, dry cleaners and city centre pubs of trade from office workers. Another British billionaire, entrepreneur Sir James Dyson, has said that work from home is a productivity disaster and is stifling innovation because people have ideas together in a room, in an office, not on a screen. Dyson, the vacuum cleaner tycoon, says that work from home sucks, hoovering up precious resources. You're welcome. Kevin Ellis Price of Price Waterhouse Coopers. A large accountancy firm has said, and I quote, the business case is clear. Our economic research suggests that a GDP cost of around 15 billion pounds a year is at stake, factoring in not only reduced spending by office workers, but the opportunity cost of people and businesses not being clustered together. Money aside, it's good for people's emotional and spiritual well-being to actually get together and work in the same environment for at least some of the week. To be creative, to interact, to problem solve, and to incorporate newer employees who are learning the ropes. You shouldn't have to beg people that you're paying good money to to come back and work in the office, especially civil servants. Whoever wins the election, we're going to have to boost productivity and grow the economy to escape our current high national debt and to pay for ever more expensive public services. The Vitality survey does suggest that hybrid working could be the answer with a few days in the office and a couple of days at home. I've got no problem with that. I do it myself. But wait till you hear this. More people who work from home call in sick. That's right. More people who work from home call in sick than those who go to the office. So they're calling in sick even though they are already at home. They can't come in today, but they weren't coming in anyway. They need to stay in bed, but they were in bed. Make it make sense. The office or factory or wherever the business is located is a hub, a social, creative and professional focal point, a place to chat about last night's Coronation Street, to moan about your kids or husband and to confide in a colleague about a problematic boss or co-worker. 
The office is about celebrating success together and making strategies when things aren't working. And what about the office romance? If you're stuck at home, you won't be enjoying the pleasure of those stolen glances from Sandra in sales or Ray in accounts. Good old Ray, absolutely packed into that Primark suit of his. And what people don't realize is that if productivity drops and the business suffers as a result of work from home, companies will ultimately lay people off. So working from home full time is a risk to your career. Ultimately, the problem is there's no accountability. With too many work shy employees browsing eBay for fashion bargains, planting daffodils in the garden and opening their first bottle of San Miguel at four in the afternoon as they peruse their last emails of the day. What they don't realize is that one of those emails could come with a nasty attachment, a P45. Work from home doesn't work.